and welcome to the seventh episode of the Swetson podcast. Today we start in a little bit different way uh, for all of y'all who are listening to the podcast and can't see this. We are in my kitchen, not a very fancy kitchen, but it's functional. And um, we're going to start cooking today. I am not a cook. Just don't hang me for that. But um, I was in a good way going to make this dish today, I had in my mind, so I figured why not videotape it and bring it to y'all. Because it's a Swedish dish uh, that not many Americans has heard of, which surprises me uh, in one way, and um, because it contains bacon. And for uh, Swedes, I'll tell you what, Americans are crazy with their bacon. If you think they are crazy, you can probably double your expectations, at least when it comes to that product. Uh, I heard a couple of days ago that they are getting some, or it's proposed to get some new animal laws on how to treat the pigs, and that might actually result in being no pigs in California, which means no bacon in California. Um, Texas will be flooded with Californians that needs bacon or we will export all our bacon to California um, So but what we're gonna make today is an oven pancake oven baked pancake I couldn't even say it oven baked pancake with bacon and in Swedish that would be flesk pankaka uh, This is a dish that my grandmother did all the time uh, you can eat it with the Swedish little berry called lingonberry. Uh, it is a small little red um, berry uh, that lives in very wet environment up in the northern part of Sweden. Has a little bit of um, taste towards cranberry, a lot of Americans says. Um, but in my family, we are not a regular Swedish family. We actually ate it with strawberry jam and sometimes even with um, sugar on even though it has uh, bacon in it uh, so that's what we're gonna do today and it's super easy to make um, especially like coming home from a long day at work uh, mash this together in the oven and there we go so with that said we're gonna start putting the oven on um, and I put it on 410 I should have done this a little bit earlier but I forgot about it there we go but it's gonna be fine. Um, if you read the original recipe, it says a way lower temperature, but I have found that 410 is approximately good uh, temperature and uh, length for, or like you don't have to cook it for hours and hours and hours, so to say. Um, simple ingredients, we need milk, we need flour, we need eggs, we need bacon. That's it. Super easy, right? Um, nothing more complicated. So you have the main batter for pancakes and then you add the pancake, uh, the bacon. Not a very hard thing. So I have, it's one package of uh, bacon that we use. I have already um, cut it up so it's easy. I'll put that aside for now. And that's where we start. And while that is cooking, uh, we're gonna put together our pancake batter. Super easy. I have already uh, measured up everything here for the easiness. Uh, I take half of the milk, approximately, makes it easier. And then some of the flour. Uh, I'll have the full recipe up online while we take all the flour on the website and um, everywhere so you can find it with the right measurements. I am certainly not a cook, nor am I a TV host, uh, nor am I a any kind of this thing. So bear with me. I am way out of my comfort zone here. Um, but baking a pancake batter ain't that hard. You just mix it all, egg, flour, and uh, milk together super easy and you just cook the 
to bake into whatever hardness you want. Do you smell this? Of course you don't, but you can imagine. There is always this kind of like conversation in Texas, how crispy you want your bacon made, okay? Um, make them as just like a tad under the crispiness you usually want them. Uh, you probably don't want them too crispy uh, in here just because you're making the pancakes afterwards. Like, it's not pancakes, but it's a little bit pancakes. Then you take whatever you have at home to put it in. Do that way. Get all, most of the grease off as much as you can. And you just fill the bottom of your form. <clears throat> I don't dry the bacon because it still gives a little bit. You need some of that bacon grease um, in there. It's always good, but you don't need all the extra. Just shake it off a little bit. all the little bacon pieces. So you put that in the very bottom of it. And if you're a vegetarian and you want to have anything else than bacon, um, you can put whatever you want in here. It doesn't have to be bacon, actually. Um, whatever you like to, to have. Um, and if you just want to do a oven baked pancake without anything, just the batter in the pan that works as well absolutely i've done that several times but now we're a little bit swixing so we do it with bacon then we take our pancake batter whisk it a little bit so we got it all easy peasy just pour it all over the bacon this or whatever you want to call it. It's actually a little bit too small. You'll see it in the end. The edges will like float on top of here. But it works. I don't have any bigger. It'll all be good. And then we mix it out a little bit. Nom, 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 nom. There we go. Then straight into the oven. Um, I would guess 410 would be approximately 35, 40 minutes is what we're looking at. So um, that goes in the oven. Ooh, don't drop it. And now we wait. While the uh, pancake is in the oven, I'll take you back to my little new corner that I made. It's not gonna be anything temporary, just temporary. Um, seventh episode of the Swixen podcast. Hope you're having a good time. We're still in the heat of Texas summer. It is supposed to be about 97 degrees Fahrenheit today, and that is around 36.1 Celsius. But the heat index again, up close to 104. And that's around 40 degrees Celsius. It's hot. It is really hot. Because <laughs> um, there's no wind. Right now we have really no wind and just blazing sun. So that's what we have to deal with for a couple of more weeks. Just welcome to Texas. If you like heat, Texas is the place to be in July, August. Absolutely. The Olympic Games has come to an end. Uh, they have handed over the flag to Paris, France where the summer games are going to be held in 2024. Sweden did a marvelous game. Uh, I am so proud of them. Um, I wonder how many cardiologists has gotten new patients within the last week, because the last couple of days was nerve wracking, nail biting, 
heart attack days for the Swedes. We had the soccer, women's soccer team that got the silver and well-deserved. They were so close to the gold. They, they wanted it so bad. It was just not their day that day. Sorry. Um, and once we had come over the loss of gold but win of silver, um, we had the equestrian show jumping team uh, final. And oh lord, I'm into equestrian, so it, it's a sport close to my heart. I was not able to watch the final because I was at work at the time, but I followed it on social media and I could feel the nerves, the tension, the nervous from Sweden, from Tokyo, from all around the world, uh, knowing that Sweden went into this as favorites and they kept it. They went all the way. Uh, Molly Bayard Jonsson with Indiana, Henrik von Eckermann with King Edwards and uh, Peter Fredriksson with All In. What a team, what they did. Like they had 262 jumps that they had to jump within the entire Tokyo. Only two rails fell, two, that's nothing. Um, that's amazing. And uh, they have not won a team golds in 97 years. 97 years, that's a long time, a long, long time. They were well-deserved it, well-deserved it. And as uh, Aftonbladet, that's one of the major Swedish newspaper, uh, I think his name is Patrick Brenning, Patrick Brenning, um, he wrote that we need to stop the Olympics now, like the Tokyo Olympics, because the Swedes have had enough, and I agree with that. <laughs> it was too much. Um, if you are able to read what he wrote um, on Aftonbladet, go do that because it was hilarious. He wrote it so charming, so well done, wrapped up the Swedish Equestrians performances very well. Um, but Tokyo Olympics is done, closed and all that, but we're coming to Paralympics. Paralympics is coming here in two weeks and think about it, they need as much attention as the Olympic Games does. They have obstacles that many of us will never ever be able to imagine. And yet they are coming to the Olympic Games. Um, it, it's gonna be fun to follow both Sweden and US. And honestly, I have no clue um, about either of the teams in the Paralympics, but it'll be interesting to follow anyway. And with Tokyo being postponed a year because of COVID, uh, that makes it a little bit like the next is coming up right on us. The Winter Games are actually coming back in six months. It's the Beijing Games. Um, Beijing is the first city who are allowed to have both Summer and Winter Games. If you recall, they had the Summer Games back in 2008. And now they're coming back having the Winter Games. Um, sure, China can have winter if you didn't know that. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And then um, as I said before, Tokyo handed over the flag to Paris. Paris, France is going to have the Summer Games in 2024. And I've been following the medal count here at the Olympics. Um, gotta mention that US had 113 medals. Like, that's a lot. That's a lot. So many Olympic records and world records were made. I'm not even going there because it's too many to keep track of. Sweden came home with nine medals, which is amazing. Ended up on the 23rd uh, place in the medal count. Uh, three golds and nine, six silvers, no bronze. Um, yet yeah, that was way over all expectation. Uh, very well done from both teams. So here back in Texas, COVID is still a thing, if you didn't know it. Um, I heard on the news yesterday uh, that there is a new variant um, that they have found on one patient down in Houston. I believe the name was like Landon uh, variant or something like that. Um, but we're still dealing with the Delta variant um, very much. The conversation here is about whether kids should have a mask or not to school, um, if kids uh, should even be in school or if it should be 
online or remote uh, learning still. Out in the society, people are not wearing masks. It's nothing has changed on that part the last week. For me, working in EMS, we're back to wearing N95s as of last week and gown up. And we actually see a lot more COVID patients than we've done prior. Absolutely, I see a difference in it in the area I work. Um, but uh, the main thing is still, it's going. The hospitals are full. It is a thing. Um, get vaccinated, I guess. In my opinion, that's up to everybody uh, to decide whether they want to. So <clears throat> I did something this week that we all have to do every year. Uh, if we have a car, at least. I went and had my car inspected. Uh, and I found there was quite a difference here between Sweden and, and US in how to get your car inspected. Here in US, you can wake up in the morning and you get the day on and you're like, oh yeah, I need to inspect my car. You can go to a gas station, you can go to uh, a dealership or some tire shops even do uh, car inspections. You roll in and you're basically out within half an hour, 45 minutes over and done with. You pay your seven to $10, depending on where, where it's at. In Sweden, it is a whole bigger ordeal. Sweden has one company that is government owned uh, that are doing the state inspections. And um, that's convenient, you know, not a problem really, but you have to make your appointment over a month in advance to get it. So you can't really, like I did, woke up that morning and said, yeah, I need to uh, get my car inspected today. You need to have plan ahead way more. And then you go there, the process is basically the same, but it's just that difference that uh, doing your car inspection in Sweden, you need to plan ahead. Here it's, I find it a little bit more convenient here um, in the way they're doing it here. Then I could go home and do all the registration and tax and pay all that online. And I get my little, we have a sticker in the window that we get uh, or you can actually go to the, the office, to the tax office and get the sticker right away. But I, I did the online version of it. But it's kind of interesting how Sweden are just like one monopoly on that. Uh, one company is allowed to do it and that is government owned, controlled, boom. But it works, um, absolutely, absolutely. And I also did something that I think I am one of the first people of 2021 to do. I have ordered my Christmas cards. Yes, it is August. It is early, but think about it. And like in the face, it's already August. Like we're almost half through August at this point. At least when we record this, then when you listen to it, it might not be August anymore. That's the, the beauty with, with online stuff. But I don't have to think about it when we come to December. I'm already done. It'll take about two weeks before the cards come in the mail to me, but then I can see it whenever I have a moment over and figure out the addresses and all that, put them in a box, put the stamps on them. When the time comes, for those that goes to Sweden, they have to go a little bit earlier. For those that go uh, domestic here in US, they go a little bit later. Already taken care of. Boom, just put them in the mailbox. Bing! So if you want the mail, uh, Christmas card from me, uh, PM me with your address and I promise you, you'll have a Christmas card when it gets closer to that time. How do you send Christmas cards by the way? And, um, are you as early as I am? Have you started Christmas gifts at all? Have you even had a thought? Some people are really into this and being really good at it and, and almost done with the Christmas gifts. Uh, I'm not one of those. But um, Christmas cards for me is a tradition that is important. To get a Christmas card is so much fun because you know that somebody has at least thought about you for a couple of seconds. And uh, it's sad that it's just dying out. Sure, it's convenient to send on electronic Christmas cards, but doing a real Christmas card is for me important to send away and say, hey, I thought about you for a couple of minutes and I hope you have a great holiday. So yeah, I, I got that taken care of 
really, really easily. Um, and we started this um, episode today in the kitchen. And that came of, out of several reasons. So I'm gonna give a shout out to my uh, fellow podcasters back in Sweden, Two Guys, Three Crowns. A podcast that I started to listen to, I found them actually after uh, I started the research of my own podcast and they have done the opposite that I have. They are Americans living in Sweden. Um, and they have, if you want to know how it is to live in Sweden, listen to their podcast. They're, they're awesome. But a, I think two episodes ago, they were talking about Princess Cake, which is a Swedish uh, cake. Um, I love it. And that's one of the things I miss. I was sitting and drooling after a princess cake all day long at work. And, but that made me think, okay, I need to cook something anyway. What should I cook and make that in here? So that's how it came with, um, with doing the pancake today. Um, it's still in the oven. We're going to go and check on it in a second. Um, but then in the same time, Ikea has come with a scented candle with a sense of meatballs. Meatballs. I, I'm, I'm just wondering. Like, yes, you come into a house and you can feel the sense of, like, the smell of cooking. But having that smell of meatball in your house, that would make me hungry all the time. And I would go and look for the meatballs that wasn't there because it came from a candle. Who came up with this idea? Is this something you would like? And as far as I could understand, I read online, um, was that this candle is um, not on the market yet. Right now they're like having it as giveaways, content and online stuff. And I don't know how to, how they were going to get it out. But who came up with it and why? I want to have my scented candles like something fresh. I don't really sense meatballs as something fresh. Do you? Is it just me that is a little bit particular with the meatballs? I'm, I want to eat it. I don't want to have a smell in my house. I'll tell you right now, this house smells of bacon. I feel like, oh Lord, I know what's going on. And I had to throw out my dogs. Um, simply because they would love to eat the entire oven with the bacon and the pancake and everything in it. So that that's what they do. Oh, um, but scented candles of meatballs. I would love to get my hands on one of those because I want to, I want to smell them. I want to know how that sense is. And don't ask me how they made, like how did they make it smell like meatballs, right? That's just, um, I, I don't know. It's weird to me. Um, and I'm even Swedish and I, I'm one of those when it comes to meatballs, I'm not really particular whether it's Swedish or Italian. I don't have to go to Ikea to buy my meatballs. So I can go to Walmart and get my meatballs. Uh, for me, it tastes basically the same. Um, so that leads us into the word of the week, which I'm going to take is meatballs. Uh, in Swedish, a meatball is köttbulle. Köttbulle. So meat, kött, ball, bulle. And Ikea, now to go back to that, um, you know, they name all the products in Swedish and they have <laughs> named this candle huvudroll, which is um, directly what, what Directly translated, it is the main character in a movie or in a on a screen or in a play or something like that. It's the main part of, of a play. Um, but that's not what they <laughs> thought of when they named it. Because huvud is a head. Roll is also to roll. So I read in one of these articles that they actually intended to meatball head roll like the meatball is the head that's rolling really really 
I don't have another name for, for the candle. The, the whole idea of having a scented candle in a meatball sense. And then they make it the name Huvudroll. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think it's hilarious. I think it's really hilarious. But yeah. Um, if you have tried it and smelled it, let me know how it was. I, I'm really, really uh, curious. But at this time, um, I can smell the bacon in my house uh, a lot right now. Very much. So let's go and check on uh, the food and see how that is. I think that it's ready because it smells ready. Woo! And it's hot. <laughs> which is good just perfect um, ouch. um here it is i don't know if you can see we'll take a picture of it um oven baked pancake with uh bacon and to that we have the lingonberry jam you can get this on amazon and not too expensive but very good um so that's how it is and that will <clears throat> conclude the episode for today. Um, a little bit different, a little bit um, smelly, and now it's going to be tasty. Um, let me know if you want me to cook something else uh, for you. As I said, I'm not a cook. I'm not a good cook at all. So why I did this, I don't know, but it was fun. And that's all that matters, right? Um, so, We'll do something else next time. I have no clue when that's gonna be. Until then, I hope you have a great time. Take care of each other, take care of yourself. Eat well, drink a lot of water, regardless of where in the world you are. Until next week, have a good time.